I've lived in Galway for over 20 years and I suppose my, my longest single relationship in the city has been uh, that I work in the GMIT Art and Design School and Film School. Uh, along with being there, I was also one of the co-founders, myself along with Ben Gagan, we founded the 126 Gallery in 2004 uh, in our house. And since then, that has managed to stay alive in various iterations. It's, it's in its uh, fifth location currently, and it's got residencies and relationships internationally. It's very exciting, and I've got nothing to do with it anymore, which is super, you know, so is that, you know, it's nice to be there at the start of something and to, 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 to kick it off. And um, also with Tulka, it was the early 2000s, um, uh, Michael Dempsey started it. Tulka is also on the international map, but it's a platform for uh, Irish curators to, to, to to do something across multiple venues, multiple formats, doing something, doing time-based theatrical objects, street objects, as well as uh, things in galleries and all sorts of soft spaces. So yeah, talk is great. Uh, as part of the 2020 celebration and the Tulker anniversary, Tulk asked uh, previous curators to come up with, to suggest projects, you know, exhibitions or projects or publications or whatever. And uh, Sarah Searson in the doc uh, in Leitrim, who had curated Tulka, asked me to participate in, in a program as an artist, which is nice. The crew here in the doc are, are really fantastic. I, I couldn't be happier with how the, how the show actually looks. It's got three main components. There's a dual screen video, which is projected onto two screens at 90 degrees to each other. Uh, there's a number of photographs, pieces of communication and computing equipment from the 60s through to the 80s. And there's some sculptural objects which are uh, effectively computers and monitors laid out on, on some tables, as well as a, a, a quasi soft semi transparent partition that divides the space up inside. So one of the things is when you're you know showing this kind of work, when you're thinking about how for people to experience this kind of stuff, you, you got to think about light and you got to think about space. So another element that's in it is a frame that's wrapped effectively in transparent plastic and cell cellophane, you know, thick cellophane. It directs you when you're coming in. It's the, the kind of plastic that, you know, it, it could be in a butcher's. There, there's something of a torture chamber to it, which is, that's my takeaway. Um, or it, maybe it's just a plastic wall. It um, suggests something bad happening at the other side, but there is no other side. But there's definitely something bad happening there. What started me thinking about this show was a certain as, as an aesthetic around the Cold War. I tried to get, use that as a starting point. So it's not about the Cold War and it's not about, you know, Soviet design aesthetic. It's not about, you know, post-war modernism. But that was the, that, that was the kickoff point to allow me to sort of to, 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 to think loudly and visually about a range of, a, a range of ideas. Uh, like one of the things I was thinking about was how, how pervasive the, the fear of nuclear war was when I would have been younger. And it was very much, a, it, was, it was a thing that was evident in popular culture, in films and in pop music and you know, books and telly. Uh, uh, when I was uh, younger in the 1980s. Uh, so, you know, uh, but, but it's not a nostalgic exhibition. It's not about any of those things, but that did certainly inform it, whereby the idea of nuclear death was, you know, it was, it was evident. It was, it was very pervasive at the time. You were kind of constantly waiting for it. And you had huge organizations doing very big things like, um, uh, like like C and D, you know, which is something that you just don't even hear about C and D anymore. But there were, I'm like, you know, that that was one of the reasons that that, that Glastonbury was a fundraiser, started off as a fundraiser for the C and D, and that used to be a really big thing. Every you know every you know re Renault car had a you know nuclear power no thanks sticker on the back of it, and uh, and you know even going back to the 70s, there was going to be you know the Carnesour Point. Um, uh, power plant, nuclear power plant in Ireland, uh, which led to a huge amount of protest. And that protest largely came with, uh, you know, along with the locals, obviously, but it was the, the uh, cultural, you know, the, largely the, the musical and literary community in Ireland, you know, sort of rebelled against it. And, uh, you know, it's, it's not something that's evident in culture, that, 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 that anxiety or that fear, or, you know, there's other anxieties and there's other fears now, but that anxiety is no longer evident.
there's a, a suite of colors, like, you know, the time when all computers were very specific, beige. And those were, you know, there was, that, that was a, quite a, like a very considered uh, design language and, you know, and industrial design language, you know, that, that, that you know, arrives at those decisions. With, with the photographs, I've, I've tried to set them up uh, so is that they're a lot like uh, product shots. They wouldn't be good enough to go into a, a magazine because I didn't try and clean up any of this, uh, the, the gear. All the gear might have come from a skip. So if you look at computer magazines or, you know, just, just magazines in general from, you know, that, that might have had an ad for uh, uh, technological objects, even like, you know, stereos, hi-fis, uh, you know, from about 30 or 40 years ago, very often that they, they were they were, you know, presented as the future and almost as, you know, quite exciting and alienating, you know, sciency objects, spacey objects. This, this popular culture that I'm talking about and the visual culture is is, is not Irish, you know, and that, you know, Ar you know, Ireland has become a much more sophisticated con country visually in the last 20 or 30 years. So one of the things I've tried to do with the sculptural objects, which are just computers, really, you know, sat on, on these beautiful plinths made by the team here in the dock in Carrick, that I haven't cleaned the computers, I haven't turned them on, I haven't got all the bits connected with them. They're just presented as objects that they could be archaeological objects, they could be historical objects. So I'm like, some people will be able to look at them and go, oh God, you know, the Amstrad 1512, I had one of those, you know. Uh, or they'll, some people will, will look at them and go, God, that, 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 oh, I can't believe people live like this. The hope that was built into these things, and they were full of idealism. All this gear was fantastically expensive. So somebody would have bought that imagining great things. And then, you know, it just ends up, you know, sort of in a dump. To me, that there's actually, that there's a lot of sadness in, in those things and in, and in, in the exhibition. Uh, the World at War. It's a film uh, shown on two screens, which are broadly, you know, sort of one-to-one -one ratio each. Um, and, and you know, like you know, golf is quite, you know, it's it's quite an emblematic piece of design. You know, it is like it's a, it's a really you know, important piece of sort of 20th century, late 20th century design. That was in a an industrial estate in Clare Morris. It's where we shot that, and then I also set that against uh, using uh, an early 2000s uh, E-Class Mercedes. Uh, which I shot in a race course near Balnasloe. Uh, with, with that film, it's not, again, like the photographs of computers, which aren't about computers. This is not about German cars. This is about power and control and iconography and the representation of these things. Um, I, I tried to make it, you know, like, you know, I tried to think about it abstractly and present it abstractly because it's not an essay. I'm not presenting thoughts. Like, the, the, the film, like the photographs, or maybe the film even more so than the photographs and the, the, the sculptures, the, the, the film is very much a dream idea about anxiety. And that anxiety is expressed through a certain aesthetic of design and of a colour palette. Another very cool element of the exhibition is eventually a publication is going to come out in relation to it, which is a number of writers, there's Joanne Laws and Pat McCabe and some other writers also, have all been asked to respond, not just to the work, but to some of the broad, broad themes that have come up in the work. The doc is going to release those uh, on, on its website. I, I hope that when people come in and see the show, that they can go and be in that space, stand there for a while and listen to it and look at it. and see how it bounces against you. It doesn't, there isn't a message in it. There's nothing to get or not get. You can't not get it. You know, there, there's no, it's, it's, it's not a test. It's just, it's pictures and, and films and yokes. So I, I would just say go and spend time, you know, go and spend time in the space and, uh, and see how you feel about it.